All right. Hello, all. And today we are going to make, make a port scanner in Python. So first, let's understand what are sockets, okay? See, sockets are nothing but they are fundamental for network programming. And this allows what applications to communicate and exchange data with other devices or programs over a network, okay? So now what happens is um, socket will to work with port scanner we'll have to import socket first so there's a library called socket this module this will provide all the attributes and methods that we need to create configure and interact with sockets all right so let's take a target let's make target and i will let you see the ports also so we will take it from the user we will take an input and here we will text we will type the text as enter the enter the ip address to scan okay and then let's take another this thing and this will be port range okay and this will again be an input and this will say that uh, enter the port range to scan and I will also give an example that whatever range you want so I'll have to specify an end and an end and start of it so let's take an example and let's give them an example explaining it from 1 to 100 and yeah this is an input that I'm taking now what we'll do is we will Split the port range from end to that means into two integers. So for this, we'll write the start port and then the end port equals to what port range dot split and the split condition would be what hyphen. Okay, port range dot split. And now let us take a start port. equals to int start port and okay here here it has to be start port this semicolon has come here so and the data type is int so that's what i'm doing and it is here end port and this would also be int and i'll write here end port okay yeah so now we'll write here print what scanning host okay and it will also tell me the target and then it will print the message from host or oh, from post port actually so many post host and then start port then to port Okay, so this is simply for you no know, output formatting that I'm using all these things so that once the code will run, you will understand what will this do. It will just print all this thing. Now, for the main thing is now coming that is formation of a for loop. So now I will create a for loop and this will be for port in range of what start port, end port, right? plus one so this will go from the starting to the end of this port okay and it will iterate uh, for the specified range including the start and the end and then i would start with creating a new socket object so let's just uh, create a new socket object right and how do i do this i will make an object sock and in this i will store by making socket dot socket Okay, socket dot socket and now the parameters that I'm passing, I will just explain it in a moment. Let me just write this code. It is AF underscore INET. And what does this do? This INET. This parameter specifies this is an IPv4 socket. And another one socket I will be taking is socket dot sock underscore stream okay 
and this specifies that this is a TCP socket. So I'm specifying this thing socket. Okay, and then let us just set the timeout. So let's set the timeout to one second only. Right, the session session timeout means that if the connection attempt takes longer than one second, then this will timeout. Okay, so let me just correct the spelling. This is set. Right, so the program tries to connect to the target IP address and um, port using the SOC connection function. Okay, so after this, we'll have to create that too. And then we will write here SOC dot set time out one second. Okay, so this will try and make an attempt. And if it is more than one second, this will be timeout. And then what I'll do is, let's create another thing. And um, let's try to connect to the target and the port on the current port. Okay. How would I do this? By using sock.connect underscore and I store it in result. I write here sock.connect underscore ex and here I will write what target and port. Let me see whether everything is fine here and uh, yeah target port and then if the connection is successful it will return zero okay so uh, for this we have to specify one more thing here for if result equals equals zero then what it should do it will print port and then it will give the port and the message that is open because we have to see whether it is open or not and then what we'll do is after this seeing that it is open i will simply close this so let's just close the socket once it is done so i will just write here sock dot close Right. So this is just after checking the port, the socket is closed using sock dot close. Right. So now the loop continues until the next port is scanned. Right. So we have to specify the range. So let's just run this, and hopefully it should run. Now this is uh, asking me the IP address. So how do I find out my IP address? I'll go to the command prompt. Okay. And there I will write. I can zoom in this thing for you ip config okay so you can see here default gateway and i'm connected to a wi-fi so this is giving me ip4 address and also default gateway subnet mask so let me take this default gateway and see what ports are open here and once i know what ports are open i can use this for you know uh, using brute force attack hydra i can do the penetration let's hit shift enter now i'll give the range so let me just give here one two suppose uh, uh okay 80 so now we can see that the port scanning has started and um, there was some spelling mistake here start port okay so uh, i mentioned here again 1280 and uh, now it's scanning and you can see here that is telling you to wait also because it is processing and it says that port 22 is open so in the meanwhile this is the scanning i will just uh, walk you through what are these ports and how many total ports we have okay a little theory so uh, the tcp ip protocol suit is having around you know 63 65536 ports and these are divided into three categories that are well-known ports which are coming under 021023 
and the famous one is port 22 which was which is ssh port ftp that is file transfer protocol which is for 21 right and http which is 80 okay so these are the most famous protocols or i would say the ports that we use and they are open and register ports are 1024 and 49151 and they are assigned by internet assigned number authority so that it ensures uniqueness and avoid conflicts and there are also dynamic and private ports and these are also known as private and formal they are temporary and these ports are typically used for client-side connections so we see that only two ports are open in the range of 1 to 100 that I have 1 to 80 that I have specified in providing a my specific ID which I got from this command prompt okay so this was the ID that I got. Now if IP before I take this ID and I run this code again. Okay. And let's check this. Okay, I, I'll make it like 1 to 100 itself. And let it scan the host. Uh, it, it will scan this uh, IP address and give me that these are the ports are open. Once I get that these ports are open, then I can, you know, start my penetration testing or attacks or whatever purpose you want to use it for of course it has to be ethically justified so it's scanning and it's telling me by default like port 22 is always open port 51 21 is open and port 80 is open because you have to you know communicate and interact with internet so you'll have to use port 80 so that is always open secure socket this thing this port is also opened and the description is also provided wherein we can see that port 22 is a secure shell and uh, it is cryptographic network it provides secure login command execution and file transfer even port 21 which is file transfer protocol it is used for transferring files between client and server so i see here it is the scanning is still on and it takes time you know to scan this entire uh, ports of the IP address that I'm specifying. So this will take time, but we have seen that how it runs when I'm giving the gate, default gateway IP. I have seen that my port 22 and port 80 were open. And 80 is for a hypertext transfer protocol. That means when, I'm, when I want to transfer data over internet, and this is standard for web servers and for accessing the websites, right? Uh, now port 23 also is open for some wi-fi's you know but this is not safe because uh, when you're using 22 23 should be rooted out right so uh, what happens now is that telnet is a network protocol and this provides virtual terminal connection so that you can remotely access and manage devices over the network okay so i think this has uh, has this is this is still scanning has it scanned okay this is just quickly let me just show you again when I use this okay one two hundred this was the same IP I used previously and since I've shown you also previously you can also you know um leave and if you want to stay to check because it takes time we can check it requires a little patience okay we can see that port 22 is open and we also see that port 80 was open for us so that was http port 23 is closed that was that is good because it is not that secure telnet and it is still scanning so it will also tell me that uh, from 1 to 100 it is taking so much of time suppose if i would have given it longer duration it would have like <laughs> taken so much of time okay i think i think for the same ip port 80 is also open because i know and uh, yeah so that is it this for this video and uh, recommend whatever you want let me know if you have any questions or suggestions so that we can work on it so thank you